Grand Rapids, Michigan today at the intersection. Probably one of my favorite venues in one of my favorite towns, one of my favorite states in the whole country. I've been coming to Grand Rapids since 2012. The first time I came here, I thought I would never see this place again. that falls apart almost every day. So the name of the game is to put it back together. The reason it falls apart every day is because for about two years, we rolled on an 18-wheeler. The 18-wheeler was big enough that the drum set could stay built on the riser all the time. I didn't have to take it apart every night anymore. When 2020 hit, the first thing that had to go was the 18-wheeler. But we all realized that we liked not setting up a drum set. So we continued to leave the drum set set up on the riser and made the drum set travel in a trailer pulled by a bus, which is much bumpier than a trailer pulled by an 18 wheeler So now, every night, the drum set basically rattles its way across the country. Anytime it rattles for more than five hours, things fall apart. And it's rare that we drive less than five hours to get to a show. Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Bristol Motor Speedway playing a show today with Morgan Wallen. It's a cold, rainy, nasty day. As usual, we've had to rebuild everything in the drum set today, but the cool thing is we have this awesome 18-wheeler do it in. for the second time in a month. Early morning truck wash. Our last tour of the year has got us playing 10 shows in 20 days all over the western half of the United States. Our first two shows are two back-to-back -back nights at the Grizzly Rose in Denver, Colorado. My wife is flying in today because this weekend is her birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it went over the bus. <laughs> Today 
were in Salt Lake City, Utah. And tonight we're playing a nice indoor venue, big theater style. I guess it's not really theater style, but um, a nice indoor venue. And we're able to use all of our new drum mics, which is awesome. So this week we're using a whole set of brand new drum mics on the whole kit. These are the Tom mics. This is the snare mic. Overheads are, I already put them up, but they're the um, RN17s. And I've actually used these before, and these are my favorite overheads ever. So I was really um, excited to get a pair to use on stage. They are way too nice to be on the road, but I don't care. These were my old mics, the good old trusty Audix D2s, D4s, D6s. Most of these mics that I bought in 2007 or eight, so I've played pretty much every show I've ever played in my entire career on these Audix mics. So nothing against Audix. These mics last forever. You see this one's beat up and rusted and old. It still works. I'm still using some of the D2s on like the little drums. I've still got a D6 in my gong drum. Also on this run, I've started triggering my snare, which I know is like a big no-no in the drummer world, but why? This rolling unit, we loaded four or five different snare samples on it, been cycling through them every day, and we've kind of landed on one that we like. I put a little bit of it in my ear mix. Mostly, Blake uses it for depth and bottom, low end in the snare out front. I like that because I feel the snare in the room more. Like, you know, when you hit your kick drum and it shakes the whole building, you play better. When I hit my snare with the trigger, it shakes the whole building a little bit more. So it makes me feel like it's got more power. So I lay back and I play lighter. So I actually play better using the trigger out front. Even when it's not in my ears, I can feel it in the building. This is the main Audix D6 kick mic. This is the sub kick, which really just lays in here. It sits just like this. This mic, you can hear it. This is going to my drum throne. So my drum throne back there is actually um, thumping right now. This mic's always live and it just sits in there too. Today, we're gonna put this new SE mic on here. We are trying to connect an iPad to our monitor console so that I can EQ my monitor mix from the drums myself. No, you're gonna go to your mix, right? So that's Johnny's mix, there's you. So that's your mix. So your snare Fader is wise. really high. Trigger out. Let's trigger in. Still got a lot of ring from the snare mic, which is cool. So the most important thing I do all day is put the set in the computer in the right order. So I asked some questions on Instagram this week for this video and uh, I had them in my phone, but I can't read them off my phone and video at the same time. So I had to write them down. We've been touring in Colorado a lot on this tour. So one question was, what is your favorite venue or spot in Colorado? <sighs> Venues, we pretty much only play Grizzly Rose. We played the Bluebird Theater in Denver one time on an acoustic show, but 
Other than that, we mostly play outside in Colorado. We played the Greeley Stampede Rodeo several times. We've played festivals all over the state. So, man, my favorite venue in Colorado is anywhere outside. How has the band changed since Fish left? Well, we haven't had to worry about waking anybody up in the middle of the night. We've had to make some adjustments. Uh, there's been definitely some adjustments to our ear mixes. Uh, lots of extra space in my ears, what I hear. There's just less stuff going on on stage, so <laughs> and we just don't have to worry about waking them up in the middle of the night with our shenanigans. Do you have any teaching videos? I don't have any teaching videos, unless you consider my everyday normal videos educational in some way. This is something I really wanna fix next year. I want to uh, move into online teaching and I want, I've never had a place in my home to do lessons. I haven't even had drums in my house since I was in high school. So it is something I wanna do. Your favorite place to tour. That's such a hard question because I love so many things about so many places. I think a musician's favorite place to tour is always foreign countries, because that's kind of the goal, is to be uh, famous far away from home. I love to tour Canada. I went to Germany twice back in 2009, and I love Europe. I also really love Australia. We went to Australia twice with Granger. So, I don't, it's, it's so hard to pick a favorite place to tour, because depending on the weather, if you're in Michigan in the right time of year, if you're in Pennsylvania in the right time of year, Maine, Washington State. Of course, everybody knows Idaho, Colorado are beautiful, but I mean, there is something uniquely beautiful about every single state. And if you don't think so, then it's probably just the wrong time of year, wherever you are. Um, any Ableton changes? There's not any Ableton changes right now, but I foresee a lot of changes happening for next year, especially with going down a band member um, going down a band member is going to put some more instrumentation into the computer and there's some challenges arising of how to make the endings of songs be fluid without a human on stage. We're headed over going to an audiologist today to get our I guess there's really not a whole lot you can do at that point, is there? Not really. I mean, until I've got a break in, like, a break in the show where I can. <laughs> is it hard to switch out monitors within the show? Um, no. Like you, you just gotta have that. like, I'm a, I'm, I'm playing drums, so. Downtown Boise. Me and Todd are headed to the pie hole. I just come from the water. Nevada today for two days off. We're halfway through our winter tour. We've got five shows left. Thanks for watching. Like this video and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for part two. Now.